Yeah, sure. Um, okay, so thank you very much. Um, the, word, it, the word is entoptic, uh, which means within the eye. I suppose if I can be prophetic in a Blake conference, what I'm going to say is that these, these my paper is about the visions of William Blake. And I'm going to bet that nobody will talk about Blake's visions, what they were. Everybody will refer to him as visionary, uh, but they will not refer to his visions. It's become a kind of, um, let's not talk about it. It's the elephant in the room. In fact, critically, we're almost at the, at the position where you might say that the current critical consensus about Blake's visions is that Blake the liar, he didn't mean it. And so what I've done in the past few years, and this is part of a longer project, is to talk about um, the neuroscience and other types of things, which are to do with uh, what I believe were his different types of hallucinations. That's not a pejorative term. It's the one that's used in the scientific community, as they call it. And if you want to look up on the right, there's a beautiful um, web page which kind of um, expands on my chapter. I don't know who did it. It's unauthorized. If you're out there, thank you. But you just Google in and it should come up. So if we can have the next slide, please. So these are some of the things that Blake says about his visions. Voices of celestial inhabitants are more distinctly heard and their forms more distinctly seen. Uh, you notice that they're visual and they're auditory. He hears things. And most of all, in a descriptive catalog, he says of one of the paintings, they are they're from wonderful original scene in my visions elsewhere. I heard and saw the visions of Albion. And of course, third parties, other people also picked up this, particularly in his later life, Crab Robinson speaking to him, he says, he reverted soon to his favorite expression, my visions. And um, Samuel Palmer, the painter, asked about it later on, says, on the whole, he thought that there were seen real objects to his outward eyes. So they were really something very in, important uh, that he talked about. So if we go to the next slide, please. So these are the research topics I asked myself, are the phenomenologies of Blake's visions recoverable? Can we find out what they are by kind of um, looking back in time and seeing what the things that he said? Uh, can they be determined? Can we find them in his art and his, uh, uh, and, you know, his, his poetry as well? Well, some of my answers are, and you'll be pleased to know this, Blake was in good neurological health, I can report. Um, his visions are all recognizably hallucinatory conditions. Remember, that's not a pejorative term. It's just a, uh, a term to describe what's going on within him. Um, my thing about um, that, yeah, all of all of Blake's visions have neural correlates. So I have nothing to say about Blake's psychology or about Blake's mind. So this is the neural Blake. And the reason why we like Blake is that we are all neurologically identical. Um, it, um, your neuro and, and physiology is not um, marked by race, not by gender, as far as I know. Um, and, and so we are all hardwired the same. And these, this is where Blake's uh, visions came from. So if I go on to the next one, please. Um, the Just going to go through a list. Um, the first visual hallucination he probably had was migraine aura. This is the one is, you know, Peckham Rye, you know the story, he sees the visions of the, of the angels. So very early onset to childhood migraine. The next one is the one I'm going to talk about mainly in this paper. It's mainly that it's easier to see this. Uh, they're called Kluver form constants, and they're very frequent in the illuminated books. Uh, they probably start from the, the early 1780s to 85. That's my evidence. That's what I'll put forward. Uh, then if we go to the next slide, please. Um, Blake, and this was a surprise to me, has a whole load of synesthesia. 
Now, I was not expecting to find this, and I came across it quite late, and it's quite normal to have a number of types which kind of overlap with each other, and Blake certainly um, did that. Uh, it's less amenable to be able to present it, you know, in a PowerPoint like this. So I've so that so, so I've not tried to do that really. And um, the next slide, please. Um, he also had what is known as the felt presence verbal auditory visual post bereavement hallucination. That's the one we know about when his brother died. So again, that comes in that 1780s. Uh, period very early. Um, he also had something which to catch us all out is not an, an hallucination. It's called Shearing's phen Phenomena and it comes out in that poem My First Vision of Blight and um, th these were real images that he saw because of the bloods, the blood capillaries, the blood cells in his eye. It's kind of a transient uh, thing, which is why he never makes that statement, those statements uh, again. And it's only very latterly that I came out with the idea that because there's a high coincidence of um, autism with synesthesia, that may, Blake, this is beyond my scope really, uh, Blake may, may have been a high functional autism uh, candidate. He's just on, on, on the edges of that. And once you kind of know that, lots of things about his life kind of fall into place. But um, um, you know, I, I, I'm not really not really an expert on on that. But um, okay, so we go to the next uh, slide. Uh, yeah, this is a piece of Blake um, science that we've forgotten in at, at the start of the century. 1909, there's the first um, um, scientific claim, if you like, that Blake's visions were linked to migraine aura. Now, you won't find this article referred to anywhere, as far as I can tell. It's not in any of the, you know, the um, bibliographies um, uh, of Blake. It's kind of fallen off the map there. And so what this person, um, Munro Smith, was talking about um, is, is a kind of, um, is the percepts that you see during migraine aura. And there's a drawing of that, there's a, there's a drawing of that, which was included in, in, in his uh, short article. And if you go to the next one, please. And this is the sort of thing that he meant, that he meant and refers to the ancient of days that what is known as a scintillating scotoma is one of the things that you see in Blake's um, um, Ancient of Days image. Now that comes from your primary visual cortex. That's where your migraine starts. And that was the claim that was made that long ago. And we have forgotten it. So this may have been the sort of shape that Blake on the left-hand side, obviously there weren't any cars in Blake's day, but these are the sorts of shapes that um, he would have seen in front of, of, of his eyes. Um, eyes open or eyes closed, by the way, these are self, self luminous. So if we go to the next plate, um, the one I'm gonna talk about is, um, is um, Kluver form constants. So Heinrich Kluver over a long period of time did various ex experiments um, with human subjects and um, what he found is that the hallucinating brain under certain circumstances sees these four uh, types of pattern. These are essentially the things that allow us to see. They come from the primary visual cortex. If we go on to the next slide, um, this is an another way of drawing up them, the tunnel, the spiral, the lattice and the cobwebs and they're only these two things we go on to the uh, these four thick shapes if we go on to just a bit about the neuro um, physiology of this the reason why you see that why, why these are seen under certain circumstances that is that they arise on the primary visual cortex 
and they are perceived on the inside of the eye. So they go from, you know, normal sight of outward objects goes the other way around. Uh, but in, in this, um, uh, the patterns of hallucinations go from the primary visual cort cortex and then are perceived on the inside of the eye. In other words, they have neural, these patterns have neural correlates. So they're not related to consciousness uh, at all. They're mapped on onto the inside of the eye. And Blake would have seen them, uh, as I would argue, um, within his visual field, eyes open or eyes closed. And these are amongst the things that I think he was seeing. Now, these are very easy to uh, show and to explain. Um, my kind of demonstration of them has not been very good. But you know, if we go on to the next slide, please. Um, so Kluver is the first one to identify these as recurrent, but the mathematical theory behind um, uh, how these work out was not established until 30, 40 years later. It's not until the 70s, it's not until 2001 that the final piece of the, the you know, if, if you like, you know, the, the mathematical understanding of how these work come into come into play. So if you like, these are the two key papers that establish the neural correlates of form constants. Um, uh, and, and so really, the my argument kind of, if you like, rests on those. They, they These two papers really just uh, prove that Kluver was right, if you like. So these are the things that allow us to see these those four particular shapes are the are the ways that allow us to to see through the first part of our visual cortex. So anyway, so if we go on to the next slide, please. Um, and these things keep cropping up in Blake. So that's really my main argument. Really, is that they are recurrent. Um, Blake would have seen these, uh, as I say, eyes open or eyes closed. Um, there are various things which can induce them, and including sleep. Um, so, so we'll come, maybe come on to that, but that's not something I talk about a, a lot today. Um, and he also seemed to have placed a high value on them, so that so they go to certain of the patrons as well. So these are two of the, so you can see the Jacob's dream um, uh, um, illustration that uh, it's it conforms to those two shapes. We carry it on with the next one, please. Um, so this one, again, you can see there's this kind of spiraling shape of, of characters, and then there's, there's this um, vortex-like thing, which, which is at the top. And in fact, we can just go through Blake pretty well like this, which is what I'm doing. If you'd like to go on to the next slide, please. This is um, Harvey's Meditations. Um, which seems to be structured around uh, this kind of spiraling staircase thing, which becomes a, um, a recurrent image in Blake. And there, then if you look carefully, it's a very, uh, uh, you know, the painting, um, you know, it, um, it, in, in the painting at the top of it, there's this kind of sunburst um, effect. So all of these things, I think that Blake is seeing, having experienced these as visual hallucinations. So if we carry on, they're actually clearer in the in illuminated books. Um, I suspect because he had more control over these, um, they were, if, if you like, the illuminated books are um, more personal, um, so they, he was able to give rise to a lot of them. So he, here's an image from um, um, America, which again has two of those um, uh, shapes from uh, the Kluver form constants. Uh, 
uh, around that kind of serpent thing that's there. If we pass on to the next one, please. Um, there it is again. The there's the serpent form, the kind of spiral, um, and at the top of it is there's some burst effect, which is the which which is the flames. And the these these four shapes are the things that you need. Uh, in order to be able to see. So they are the core of your visual system. So they're, so, so the, your primary visual cortex or other areas of the visual cortex, numbers two, three, four, and five, and I think six as well, uh, which, which do other things, but the primary visual cortex, if you like, builds a basic kind of shape. So it's really, really important um, to us. If we go on to the... Next one, I've probably got more of these. Yeah, the cobweb one as well. So again, this is from Europe. Um, and I've often wondered, you know, why that's there. And that's why he's there. That That's why it, it's there, because that, that that's what Blake saw literally in vision. And remember, he's seen these things, eyes open or eyes closed. So they are visual, they are visions, just as he said that, that that they were but of course they weren't kind of segregated they they weren't defined until Kluver and then they weren't um mathematically validated until those research papers which I was discussing earlier so if we go on uh, again because I think I've probably got more of these yes I've I, I've often wondered about this net and of course this um it's called the lattice form constant you can have uh, describe it you know, with any numbers of words, but that's what it really is. And that's why that image um, comes back. So this is visionary art. Remember, Blake is looking, it, Blake is um, portraying the visions that he had. So these are not external objects. It's not exoptic visions it, these are entoptic they they are within with um that they they are seen um within his eye projected from his primary visual cortex so they are visions in the sense that we we understand it and i think i probably got more of these i forget how many i've got now so if you carry on sabilla please um yes now um Here's an interesting one, Milton's Mysterious Dream, where uh, Blake seems to have identified three out of four of them. It's quite extraordinary. Um, if we carry on to the next one, um, there's the cobweb shape, which is a kind of a recurrent one that comes in Blake. And, and you see that it, it actually is a cobweb, which is why it doesn't look totally like a natural cobweb. Um, cobweb but kind of a drawing of it so that's the cobwebs is is one visual um and then number if we carry on Sibella please to the next one and then there are two two of them here the lattices and the spiral the spiral one and the spiral one is easier to see because it's in that kind of scroll thing that that's there and then you have to look even more carefully um at the edges, um, uh, um, uh, just above where I've got that lattice shape, you can see that there is a net. Now, luckily for me, Blake did a, a description of this painting because he had to explain them to others. So if we go on to the next slide, please, there is Blake's own account of what is in the painting. I'm just gonna blow that up on the next slide, please. Sibylla and Milton sleeping on the bank, sleep descending with strange, mysterious dream upon his wings of scrolls, nets and webs. Now those are three out of the four um, primary um, um, clover form constants. And uh, I, if you look up in, you know, the Milton concordances, uh, hardly any of those words occur in the Milton poetic co concordance anyway. So, so Blake is not finding it uh, within Milton. Uh, he's had this vision 
and then he's really um, drawing. He's really drawing the pers uh, drawing the pictures based upon the percepts, the entoptic um, inside the eye percepts that is seen. So, as I say, those words are not within the Milton corpus. Certainly not within the Milton poetic corpus. It's a bit harder to research the you know, the, you know, the prose concordance right be very um um surprised that that they were there so as i'm reaching to the end now so why do we all like blake what is it that we like about blake well one of the reasons i i think is that um as i was saying I hope i was saying at the beginning of the talk your your neuro and anatomy your your neurophysiology is exactly the same as Blake's uh, it's not racialized it's not marked by gender as far as I know uh, you you have the same you, you would see the same uh, things under the same circumstances that that Blake saw so really um, because our neuro and anatomy is global you can kind of see why I, why I was um, uh, after trying to include this um, talk within Global Blake. So thank you very much for listening.